Tales of the Dark Knight. <clears throat> there are many stories in Gotham City. I'm going to tell you some of them. Here's a recent one. Christopher Nolan's closure to the Dark Knight trilogy, Dark Knight Rises from 2012, um, came out earlier this summer. At the start of this film, Batman has, has been reduced in a sense, but also in a sense dispersed and enlarged uh, to become more than a man, to become a myth. He's been reduced to a symbol, a simple chalk marking made by children on a wall. Um, he hasn't been seen for around eight years, so he's become both more and less than a man. John Blake, Detective John Blake at the start of the film, asks the kid, so you know about him, the kids, of course, do you think he's coming back? I don't know, says Blake. Batman has become, in his absence, an urban myth. And in becoming an urban myth, Batman becomes, as I say, both less and more than an actual man. Various stories explore this idea within official Batman continuity and narrative. Here's a story from May 1997, simply called Stories. A group of Gothamites are caught in an elevator. The reason why doesn't really matter, it's because of a terrorist attack, but the point is a mixed, diverse group is stuck in an elevator for a few hours. Um, people of various generations, ethnicity and gender, and they start saying, well, we don't have to worry because Batman's going to rescue us. And then they start sharing stories, sharing their memories of what Batman means to them, their own interpretation of Batman. And they've all, they all remember, they all see Batman and imagine Batman in different ways. Here's the first story. This is an older lady called Julie Madison. I kissed him once many years ago. He had such sweet lips. My name is Julie Madison. And I first met Batman in the June of 1939. So already we've got this sense of a character, a man, who's been in Gotham for many more years than seems actually plausible. His life seems longer than is actually convincing. But here's Julie's memory of, um, of her Batman from 1939. Batman versus a monk. And it's drawn in the same kind of quite crude, simple, bold style of Bob Kane and Bill Finger and Jerry Robinson from the comics of 1939. Another man tells this story. Um, an African-American cop, maybe he's in his 50s. Ladies write about Batman. Saw him once myself. Helped him crack a case back in 52, and his son's heard the story before. Jimmy Paris Hush, this is my story. And here's his story, 1952. The bulb boss of Gotham City. And I think you can see the guy at the bottom there as a younger man, the, the beat cop, like Jonathan Blake. This, again, is a different Batman. You can see it's drawn a different style. And at the bottom, it says it's a tribute to Dick Sprang, a different artist from the 1950s. Already we have two conflicting ideas of Batman, which also undermines the idea that could this possibly be the same man? He's become a series of stories, a collection of stories, a mosaic and a myth. But now the kid tells his story. Batman's real. He's got a wicked suit with evil spikes and killer lights flashing out of his chest. Steel man. None of those pantyhose ball. He's cold. I've seen the man. And the kid has seen the man, and here's the evidence of it. This is the Batman of the 1990s, a much more vicious armoured soldier with floodlights shining from his chest, snapping people's arms. This was the aesthetic and the approach in many darker, grittier comic books of the 1990s. Well, here's another story going way back, 1973, the Batman nobody knows, expanding on that idea of Batman as a, as a folk tale, something told around the campfire, quite literally here, because deep in the woods, far outside Gotham, Three ghetto hardens kids, guests of millionaire Bruce Wayne, get their first breath of smog-free air, their first sight of the great outdoors. And they start telling tales about who they think Batman is. And these are young kids from ethnic minorities. That old Batwing, says Ronnie, is a real live dude. There's nothing spooky about him except how he comes on. And there's Ronnie's imagining of, of Batman. And Ronnie's imagining of Batman, though different from the ones we've seen before, is just as valid as anyone else's. He's loaded with trick gadgets, shiny plastic wings rung by motors, jet propelled by tiny rockets. Why is Bruce Wayne in his polo neck? You see Batman as a super mod crime fighter, Ronnie, trying to understand it from his white patriarchal point of view. Not super, Mr. Wayne. He's one down-to-earth dude. A one-man army, the Batman is Muhammad Ali, J Jim Brown, Shaft, and Superfly all rolled into one. So to Ronnie, he's taking black cultural icons from the period, from the early 1970s, and that's how he's creating his myth of Batman. 
But no one's laughing at this. It's as valid as any other story. One of the other kids like, wow, Ronnie, you make the Batman sound like a brother. Well, what else could a cool cat like him be, Ziggy? The black Batman. Well, here's another story in another medium. There are so many stories of the Batman, and we still haven't seen one which is more real than the others. I know what he's really like, says a young girl to her two male companions when they're exploring Gotham City. This is from a cartoon, the animated series, Legends of the Dark Knight, 1998. I know what he's really like, and you guys are both totally clueless. First of all, Batman's real old. Well, how old? Well, he's 50. And second, Robin's a girl. And she's imagining herself as Robin. So various interpretations, all of them equally valid. Now, why do these interpretations all work? Well, going back to the story called Stories about the people in the elevator, they work because they resonate with and uh, pick up on and connect with actual episodes in the real Batman's fictional life, the real Batman's fictional life. Batman was first published in May 1939. Batman has been going for that long. He's gone genuinely through various incarnations, and all of them are part of official continuity. So this is the first ever appearance of Batman, May 1939, Detective Comics. And the point is, kind of references, the joke is, so it's not really a joke, it's a truth. The reason that Julie Madison is telling the truth is because Julie Madison really was Bruce Wayne's girlfriend in the comics of 1939. The, uh, the beat cop who remembers a case with Batman in 1952. Well, Batman was around in 1952, and he was fighting people like the bold boss of Gotham City. Here it's the, uh, the robot cop of Gotham City. That's a story from 52, and when things got a bit zanier, a bit more science fiction, a bit less serious. The kid, you remember, said Batman's really he's got guns and armor. Well, that's true as well, because in the 1990s, Batman was rebooted with a different guy inside the suit, and it was a different period, and it was much more kind of hardcore, armored, as you can see, claws on his uh, gauntlets and so on. But that's also a real Batman. That's one of the Batmen that we have seen in stories of the character. Robin's a girl? Well, Robin was a girl. Robin was a girl in 1986. Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns, which is one of the most influential Batman stories of all time. That's the 50-year-old Batman. And a girl who looks very much like the one who was telling the story is his Robin. All these stories are true. Well, this is Batman. This is Batman from a film serial made by Columbia in 1943. That's a man called Lewis Wilson, wearing a cheap costume. It's actually a very entertaining serial, if you could ignore the uh, anti-Japanese message. It was made in the middle of World War II. That was Batman as a propaganda patriot. Well, this is Batman. This is the Batman that many of us know and recognize. Some fans, the kind of fans who like that armored 1990s Batman, might not be fond of this one. It's Adam West in the series that ran in the late 1960s on ABC television. Um, often thought of as a kind of campy, playful Batman. It's one of my favorite Batman, because I think we can embrace all the different incarnations of the character. We don't have to repress one to celebrate the other. Here's another Batman. It's not a personal favorite of mine, I must admit. <coughs> I've tried to enjoy uh, Batman and Robin by Joel Schumacher again. It, I'll try again sometime, but it's still, not really, <laughs> it's still not really working for me. It's George Clooney as Batman. I think the problem with this is, Everyone was so embarrassed about it. Um, they weren't. <coughs> Adam West took it very seriously. He embraced the role. Everyone involved in Joel Schumacher's Batman and Robin kind of seemed like they hated the, the whole experience. But that's still a Batman. That's a, that's a story about Batman and Robin and Batgirl. Well, this is Batman. This is a Batman we all know now and that many of us admire. Christian Bale's Batman from Christopher Nolan's trilogy. And here's another Batman that actually, ironically, sells much more than any Batman in the comics now. It's the Batman from the video games. Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, voiced by the same actor who does the, uh, the voice of Batman on the animated, animated series. And that's a Batman, again, that millions of people inhabit. They inhabit the character and they play as Batman. They take on Batman's role. They control Batman. Well, this is Batman. He's a realistic Batman by Alex Ross. Photorealistic, looks like a real guy. But to me, this is Batman. This is equally Batman. It's even, it's a more charming and, and more important Batman. Because it's a kid's Batman. It could be any kid's drawing. And no doubt I drew countless drawings like that. Maybe some of you have drawn pictures like that. Me, I don't always put ha ha ha, he's mixing up Batman and the Joker. But you know, that's fine. Well, that's, you know, so whatever. Um, but I like that. You know, that's a, that's a kid getting in on the myth at a young age. And to me, despite the fact it might be technically as proficient, that is as valid 
a rendition of the Batman as the, the last one, the more photorealistic one. Well, this is Batman. That kid thinks he's Batman. Every kid who's put on a, a, a cape made out of a tablecloth and a, a Halloween mask and stood on a table with the wind blowing through his cloak genuinely thinks he's Batman. That kid thinks he's Batman. And to me, he is Batman, because Batman belongs to all of us. Now, I know Batman is owned by Warner Brothers and DC Comics, but I think because he's been around for, 90, for 73 years now, uh, Batman has kind of become a kind of folk icon, something, someone that we tell stories about around the campfire. And so my, to me, that kid has a right to claim the identity as much as anyone else. And so does this kid. That girl thinks she's Batman. She is. She's welcome to him. Batman belongs to her as well. And this kid thinks he's Batman. He knows he's Batman. Well, he is Batman. Let's give him that too. And any of those kids could be Batman. Now, in Christopher Nolan's film, John Blake does become Batman. That's a spoiler for anyone who hasn't seen Dark Knight Rises, but you've had a few months. He does become Batman. Or maybe he becomes Robin. Well, he becomes, we don't know exactly what he calls himself, but he inherits the mantle of the Batman at the end, and it's him who is the Dark Knight who rises at the end. So John Blake, who was talking about Batman as myth, becomes Batman. Well, if that's the case, he could become Batman too. Because we've seen the Batman. The Batman isn't a man. The Batman is a role. The Batman is a responsibility. So he could equally grow up to become Batman. And maybe he would in a future episode. This is also Batman, an unfortunate side of Batman. It's uh, the face of grief in Colorado when a criminal to me, a misreading, harnessed the destructive energy he thought of Joker and entered a, uh, a movie theatre and tragically killed people. That's also, we have to accept, that's also someone who has read Batman, the myth of Batman, even if they've put it to very unfortunate and tragic ends. But also, this is Batman. This is what Batman is about as well. Christian Bale and his wife arriving without ceremony at the hospital where the injured, injured were being tended to, to comfort the grieving. So Batman, like any myth, can be used for good or bad. I think it can be twisted or it can be embraced and used to enrich us, to enhance our lives. Back to 1973. The kids are arguing about who the real Batman is, the Batman nobody knows. I don't know, Ronnie. Let's ask Mr. Wayne what he thinks. He's kind of grown up, so we should be able to get an authoritative answer from Mr. Wayne. Well, where did he go? Let me tell you what I think, fellas. Mr. Wayne, a voice from the darkness. He's put on his Batman outfit, and he jumps out. I think the Batman looks like this. So, you know, there's the, the great white father jumping out. You know, kids, you've got your idea of Batman. But um, let me tell you the truth. Well, ironically, what happens, they, they don't believe him. They think, they think it's Mr. Wayne. What well, is Mr. Wayne? No way, man, no how. Every costume cat thinks he could be the man, the real black Batman. So Ronnie still thinks the Batman is black, which is great. The fact that Mr. Wayne came out with his mask on doesn't undermine that at all. You want to play Mr. Wayne, you're on your own. I'm going to turn in. And Batman's musing, well, you know, that didn't work. Trying to rationalise why. It didn't work because they're not guilty. Now, you remember Ronnie imagined his Batman, the Bat Wings, a real live dude, a combination of all his African-American cultural icons of the early 1970s. Well, just as John Blake inherited the mantle of the Batman, that character came true too. Last year, in a comic called Batwing, who was the first ever black Batman character. So, some 40 years on, Ronnie's dream, that's not actually Ronnie in continuity, but it's Ronnie's Batman, was actually made officially true. So Batman belongs to all of us, Batman is a mosaic, Batman is a myth, Batman has become a folk hero, just as, as Joker can also become a, a folk devil. And our responsibility, for the sake of kids like this, who believe that they can be Batman, is to do that myth justice. Thank you very much. <laughs>